idea developed, and it was like a watershed moment for me, and it's, part, it's, one, it's near the top of my teaching mantras. There was a, a manual for college band directors, or no, a college instructional manual for band directors. Uh, it's called A Sound Approach to Developing Instrumentalists. And I'm chorally trained, so what did I want to read that for? A friend recommended it because we were talking about Kodai syllables, ta ta, ti ti ta, and Gordon syllables, do, do, day, do, today, to do, and all the other things. The Eastman ones, one, one, one lata, two lata, or two nata, I don't know what they do. But um, they're all means to an end. So I got that and I read that chapter, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, skipped, I skipped the chapters on Ambushur and all that stuff. But I found this one chapter and it hit me over the head. And I read it again and again and again. Developing Rhythmic Feeling is the title of the chapter. And Schleucher said, we spend too much time teaching notation. I don't know about you, but my first piano lesson, okay, it's black keys, black keys. That's a whole note, it gets four beats. One, two, three, four. That's how I was taught. We spend too much time teaching notation. Instead, we should derive meaning from the notation. We should be, uh, well, that's the corollary. We should be teaching rhythmic feeling. He's a band director. He has his kids sit there, and he has all kinds of things that he does while they're seated. You will see some of those today. So rhythmic feeling, what does that mean? There's beat competency. And if you have a group, and I'm talking about, I'm talking about adults too. If you have a, a group and they can't as a warm-up activity, because um, I, I'm, I have to back up a, just one little bit. My brain is on overload. People go, okay, I'm in a church choir. You're in a school, I get it. But I'm in a church situation. How do I do this? Take a brain break. If you're working on that really hard piece for Easter, and it's, things aren't going so well, do some of this other stuff to it. It's like a refresh button on the computer screen. I can't believe I just used that analogy. So, um, <laughs> developing rhythmic feeling. Beat competency. I'm going to make sure that all of you can step the beat first. And then we'll go from there. So, beat competency. You have to be able to feel different meters. You have to be able to feel different rhythms. How many pieces did we read today where that bum, 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 bum happened over and over and over? It's about the rhythmic feeling. How does that rhythm feel? Oh, wait a minute. You're going to see that in one of the examples, too. So I won't get ahead of myself. Um, so enough talk. We're going to move. Please take risks. I really don't care if you make mistakes. I teach middle school. I've seen just about anything. <laughs> so I am not interested in how many mistakes you make. I am interested if you are understanding what I'm saying. Um, so if you don't, please ask questions. I like my classroom to be a, a safe environment. My kids know that early on. Yes, I have a real sarcastic streak, but I try not to use it on them. Unless they're in high school in my advanced group and they get me. So um, come out here, please. We're going to move around. I'm going to play some examples. Or no, oh, thank you. No bells. Rhythmic feeling. The body is the instrument. You hear all these connecting ideas. The handbell isn't the interest, instrument. If your body can't do this stuff, who cares if you have a handbell in it? Your director does. <laughs> I must say, and some of you will get this if you're listening, um, blue shirts did a decent job. That's going to be one of the highlights of my visit. Because I guess I use that a lot. I was decent. And they go, okay, that's better. Than that was lousy. So, but your reaction when I said decent was like, what? Could you think of something nice? <laughs> Apparently not. Okay, so here's the first piece of music. I want you to find, um, and, and I have to tell you, I do have a handout, but it's pretty sketchy. So it highlights the big topics, but it doesn't. It's not my usual anal 
Move your right thumb and then your left thumb and all this. No, not this one. Um, find the beat. And it's really okay if you disagree. I'm serious. Can you tap that? Actually, the author Schleuder says you should start with gross motor, which means your feet, although that's harder. Where's the beat? What I would really like is if you could find your own path. It's a little crowded, but move, move, not just in place. Good. All right, you passed that test, so you all have beat competency. I'm quite serious. Music educators know that they need to teach beat competency. And it's an ongoing skill forever. Now, in this, this I want um, the beat divides. And this is what I like. I like to see, see, I can assess you very quickly this. I want you to continue to step the beat. But if you hear the division, and it's OK if you don't, but if you do, I want you to show it somewhere on your body. I like to do this for demonstration purposes. If that's not something you're comfortable with, show it on the side of your body. I don't care. I really haven't seen any other variations. But I like this, and that's why. Yeah, you could be that. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Here's the brain learns better if you add movement, right? So yay hand goes because that's already adding movement. But here I'm trying to get you to understand a couple of concepts by moving around, all right? So we got, we'll establish the beat and then if you can hear the divisions of the beat, I would like you to show me that somewhere in your body. Yeah, that, that opens up worlds for middle school kids. <laughs> they're, 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 a little afraid, they're a little afraid to show. So here we go. You ready? Back to the beginning. And it starts out quietly. Step the beat. If you hear the division, will you show that somewhere on your body? Now that's interesting. Yours is the same as the beat. I'll give you a hint. The division is not the same as the beat. And if you're in middle school, you look around to see what everybody else was doing. Sorry. Okay, you got the idea? Most of you did this. I'm exaggerating. Did, can you see what I did? How, how many sounds up here were you pulsing for each step? Two. Two. So, um, let me introduce you to the wonderful world of Edwin Gordon. He probably thought more about how people learn <laughs> about music than anybody else I know. He worked well into his late 80s. He died just last fall. He is a national treasure. I buy his books and I read about a paragraph and then I have a headache and I have to... He's really a very... <laughs> but somewhere along the line I was able to uh, get some basic concepts out of it. So he calls the basic beat the macro beat. The divisions he calls micro beat. Great. In this book, same book that I read, chapter on rhythmic feeling, Edwin Gordon changed his mind. His first name for macro beats were tempo beats. I love that. Because if the tempo's fast, <laughs> if the tempo's slower, you got it. And then this, this next thing will make more sense a little later on. He calls the division meter beats. Brilliant. Brilliant. So for now, we use macro and micro. But if I refer to tempo beats and meter beats, you'll understand. Um, so you're ready for step two. The brain, the brain shuts down after a while. If you do something too many times in a row the exact same way it stops learning. You're the director, you're in a rehearsal, and you just pass it. We're going to play this on Sunday, and we still don't have measures 12 to 15. <laughs> We're going to get that. We are. We are. And at some point, you hit a wall. The group hits a wall. That happens to everybody. Um, no, I don't know. I have some stories I could tell about hitting a wall, but uh, ask me later. So. 
At some point, I'm going to say switch. Then I want the macro beats on your body and the micro beats here. This. We're talking about developing rhythmic feeling. This will help your body understand what it is that we're doing out here. We will get to music eventually, but really not for a while, and I'm not going to apologize for that. If we spend half the time on the music, we'll be lucky, because they're all examples of what we're doing. All right, let's go back, and let's um, start with, let's start with the, um, what we were doing before, macro first, all right? Because I promise you the switching is not, even though intellectually you think it's not going to be automatic. Is this too crowded or do we need to start some people back here too? Yeah, if you want to go, all right, I'll just swallow my standards here. Now, what I don't like is then you're making a circle. I like you exploring space. But if you want to do that, it's fine. Uh, so here we go, macro beat, which is also called what? Tempo beat, manipulating the information. Were you early in? Oh, yes, of course you were. You're a blue. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, remember, we were talking about manipulating the information. I, well, it's all right if you don't. I just said 9,000 things. I'll do that next commercial break. Oh, let's go back. Macro beat in the feet, the tempo beats. Show me the micro beat somewhere. Switch. organize themselves into patterns of stronger and weaker beats. This is all Dal Crows. Dal Crows would have, oh, you'd be in leotards, right? And those <laughs> but this is this kind of, he wrote, I told you earlier, his college students, he was disappointed that really, I'm translating because he's been dead for a while, but his college students did not understand feet, tempo, and meter. So he developed these things. And this wasn't an exact alcos, but it certainly patterned after. Put one here, one here, then switch. And if we did this long enough here in my class, we'd be switching more frequently. And it gets better and better and better. So meter is the organization of the beats into stronger and weaker pulses. Dalcos, tennis balls. Anybody ever do that? Best thing I've ever seen for teaching meter. Because it, it teaches the rhythmic feeling. Okay, last thing. When the beat subdivides into twos, and for today, will you just accept that? Because it could be groups of four. Yeah, of course, you will. I don't know what I'm talking about. So, um, so, let's just pretend that when the beat divides into twos, that's simple meter. All right? Simple meter. So we have the macro beats, the micro beats. Here's the significant thing uh, simple meter. The tempo beat is the quarter note, or it doesn't have to be, but let's say it is for today. And then the micro beats, the, the tempo beats define, not the tempo, the meter beats define the simple meter. It's dividing into twos. Is that clear? That's important information. Next example, listen. You don't have to start moving right away, but listen and tell me at the end what's different about this. I'm really interested in the macro or the tempo beats here. This is great to have them on the phone, but in Dropbox it takes a few seconds. If anybody knows a way so it just doesn't take a few seconds. Come on. Step the macro beat.
Uh, and Wood Gordon would love this classroom because he'd say, see, Joy, that's what I wrote in this book. Some of you heard the macro beats as yum, pa da dum, bum, 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 pa da dum. He would say that's just fine. That's the way you audiate it. That's the way you hear that. It's okay with me. Edwin Gordon says everything's either triple or duple, everything. Um, we won't go in there, into that because this isn't a graduate course on Edwin Gordon. But what was different about that? Did it feel a little different? Yeah. And some of you know the answer. What was different about that? I love asking leading questions. And I need my water because I'm drawing out. Oh, here it is. Um, and, he, and it's really okay. What I love about teaching this way by asking leading questions is I often get answers I had no idea. And sometimes they're brilliant. And sometimes they're not. <laughs> it's okay. I would never criticize anybody. So tell me so I don't judge. I want to hear what you think, what you think. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't judge. And then if somebody, I really like what Derek said. Let's zero in on what he did. So what was different about that? What felt different? You're intellectualizing it. Yeah? Yes, the temp. I'm not judging. OK, fine, thank you. Other ideas? I heard more subdivisions than Tom before. Yeah, there, there were some 16. Yes, you're right. So here's what I wanted out of this example, and it's OK if in that little microcosm you didn't get that. It felt different, and it is triple meter. You weren't wrong, but I'm not going to tell you that you were right right away. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because the, the pulse, the big pulse switches feet. The weight shifts. Does triple meter feel different? Of course it does. I live in uh, level one and two land almost entirely. And the whole concept of teaching triple meter eludes some kids because they don't Feel the difference. Thank you, thank you. I paid them all. Of course. Get them up off the bench and walk around. Please do. Um, so, you with me? All right, next example. So, that was my triple meter example. Um, and if it didn't feel different, I don't want you to go, wow, I didn't hear any difference. But eventually, if I had, if I had modeled might have done this and then you might catch on. Does that make sense? Next. Yeah, a waltz. Of course, kids don't know what a waltz is. But you do. Here's the next one. I like to pick different kinds of examples. Okay. I don't want this. I don't want, no, it does work. I just, you know, technology is only good as a person operating it. Here we go. Where's the macro beat? Walk around the room, please. enough somebody's going to know right off the bat. Kids or your other ringers may not. This meter has a swaying quality. Edwin Gordon often teaches it like this. And you do nonsense chants in this meter. And that's okay. 
Um, to the, is that not a, is that not a uh, narrow enough question? What was different about this example that the others, that didn't happen in the others? Yes, of course. You're, you're, uh, yes. It is compound meter, so you're right. Let's take it from there. My, none of my kids would know that, but that's okay. Yes. So, the macro beat, the tempo beat, and then the micro beats, or the meter beats. Strong weight, weak. <laughs> Strong weight, yes. So, um, I don't, sorry. Dessert reception. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm dessert reception, too. At any rate, um, uh, she's right. Or whoever said it. The, the big difference, it's a different kind of meter. Simple meter is when the macro beat divided bum, 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 or twinkle, twinkle, little star. And there's a whole area we're not addressing right now, but the melodic rhythm. I'm trying to make these examples really obvious, but you've got to deal with the melody. It's usually not all eight notes or all whatever. So, uh, compound meter. When the macro, when the tempo beat divides, it divides into groups of three. Yes? It's a very different kind of rhythmic feeling. Yes. Trust me, it is. Um, until I figured out how to teach 6-8, I avoided it like the play. There's no reason to, if you realize a few things. So you've got the whole macro-micro thing. I really like tempo beats, meter beats. Next example. This is fun for me, to lead you to discovery. I could lecture and tell you all this. So, I don't want to do that. Thank you, God, for making me a middle school teacher. Um, because you can't do that with a middle loser after 30 seconds. Oh, no, let's do this. Let's do this example for Nancy. Find the macro beat. Oh, we're going to have fun. Composition. I was sitting across from Nancy at lunch. Are you Michael Joy? I love Dorian Dance. That's Dorian Dance. So what was different about that? First of all, was it easy to find where the macro beat was? No. Yeah, I, I don't mean to be nasty. That's not nasty. Most of you didn't. We're not anywhere close. It's because it goes so fast. That's a tough example. Um, any observations, and I don't care if you intellectualize it at this point, because I do want to get, by halfway through, I want to get to some musical examples, all right? But I don't think the microbeat was uh, even. You don't? I don't. All right, thank you. Any other ideas? It seems like mixed meter. Uh, it's your right. It's, you're intellectualizing, but you're right. All right, it's late in the day. The macro beat, or whatever this is, you're calling this, is the constant. Yes. Yes, I don't mean to be disrespectful, and I didn't, I didn't say anything, but it's just the opposite that's true. The you, constant here is the micro beat. It did not change. Oh, oh, okay. It did not change at all. And that's how I teach mixed meter. It's really not that hard if you know how to do it. And you've got to do it in a way that you're convinced works. Um, so, I want to show you... That's the 
Raleigh ringers, by the way. Not the best example to use. I have to find something different. I usually use Gaudete Te No. Gaudete Ba Da Dum Ba Dum Ba Dum Bum 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 Well, um, something. I'm going to find something better because that was just too fast. So the eighth note stays constant, but the meter does not stay constant. It switches. I'm going to slow it way down. It's six eight three four six eight three four at the beginning. So it's one two three 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 one two three. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And that's called mixed meter because you mix. It's not in one meter. I don't want to say time signature. Edward Gordon doesn't even like the word time signature. He calls it a meter signature, and it's right. It doesn't tell you anything about time, but it does give you some information about meter by giving you some things to think about here. So we've got macro beat, which can also be called tempo beats. That had really fast tempo beats, <coughs> and they kept shifting. Mixed meter. Um, if you stayed, I wrote, I did a folk song arrangement of a Macedonian folk song in 7-8. Delinda's had the pleasure of uh, playing that. It's one, two, three, one, two. Oh, shoot. It's right here. Duh! <laughs> Pretend I just didn't say that. It's not, it's not on bells, but it's a, it's a, it's a Macedonian uh, folk group. Listen, this is what, see, this is how my brain is tight. This should have been first, and then... Dorian wouldn't have been such a daunting example. Before I arrange this, I want to examples a little too fast also. Um, there are probably some examples, I just haven't thought of them yet. So that's 3 plus 2 plus 2. That means one macro beat divides, subdivides into three eighth notes. Three, let's use eighth notes because you know what I'm talking about, right? And then 2 plus 2. So, oh well, Joy, you have a, anybody need this anymore? Anyone need this book title? Thank you. Here's where people like me who are visual learners will finally see the light bulb. In a simple meter, there's the macro, this is the micro. In my Kodai education, we learned to use what's called stick notation. Without drawing all the note heads, you still get the information you need, right? So this is simple meter. And the micro, the macro beat in compound meter is, you, is, at least to start out, is this, right? And then the micro beats are grouped into threes, and they look like this, or something that equals this. And you'll see more, because I did pick a 6 8 piece. So you will see more examples. This is compound. Then, if you do something like this 7 8, the macro beats and the micro beats, and it's very important that those eighth notes remain constant. More often than not, that's true, but not always. There's always some place where they say, dotted quarter equals quarter, and that's a whole different ball game. That's much harder. So I don't teach that. I mean, if I had to, I would, but most of the time this is true. Do you see what's happening? This has two names. This is called asymmetric meter because the length of the macro beats 
are not equal. They're not symmetric. Another name for that is irregular meter. And somehow it just sounds like digestive issues, so I don't use <laughs> irregular meter. <laughs> but the length of the macro beats aren't the same, right? Um, so that's different from mixed meter where it changes. You could have a piece, and uh, thank you, uh, handbell world. Level when you go like six, eight, three, four, if it stays like that for the whole piece, that's not rocket science. That's not a level four or five. That's really a three plus, I think. And more and more composers, uh, publishers are doing that. Yovano, the one we just tried to do in seven, is a three plus because it stays in seven, eight through the whole piece. It never changes. Am I starting to make some sense? We need to make. We need to bring some meaning to the notation. We go back. You need three pieces of uh, music for this session. The first one is People Look East. They're all in the, the session one packet. So People Look East. Um, the packet should be on the table. Okay, someone is next. I, oh, it's on the stand. Duh. I'm just going to stop using the baton. I'm not doing it very well, and it just gets in the way. Nobody's going to think me less professional, right, if I don't do that? So, don't open the music yet, but these are the pieces you need. People Look East, An Expression of Joy, and Comfort, Comfort Ye My People. Those three pieces. So in these three examples, you're going to see examples of all the things we just talked about in real rapid fire now. Is there anybody who can't find those three pieces because I really would like to move forward? As soon as I find oh, water. I, I saw Greg Ashurst teach last week, and I, I know exactly where he's coming from. He was so tired, it was the last day. Where did I put this? And he kept pacing. I want to thank him. I'm glad somebody else does it. Um, so. May we move on? If you don't have the music, Forget about it. We'll get it when it's time. So we were um, developing some rhythmic feeling by stepping and clapping somewhere on your body, right? And Schleuder, the author, says, okay, that's a good place to start. I'll talk to this side. So, <laughs> so on, um, and if they get it, they get it. If they don't, oh well. Schleuder said at some point you have to put that in the fine motor skills. So here is a way to do that. Um, remember how I said I'm going to, we're going to do something in 6-8 in a minute. But remember how I said that it's kind of got a rocking or swaying quality to it? I'm just going to chant some rhythms. When you step the beat, the macro beat in place, ba. Listen to me. Ba 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 and then the other two somewhere else. This is good for musical malady. That way you don't feel the shift. The strongest pulse is always in the same hand. Does that make sense? 
ba 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 All right, this is what I just did. Edwin Gordon said, when babies learn to speak, they don't come start out in full sentences, right? Ba 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 ba. My uh, oldest granddaughter is six and a half. Used to have trouble with L's, and they call me Pop or Papa. So I remember holding her one day. She was looking at one of those little Swarovski crystal koala bears. Look, Papa, koala bear! But I knew what she meant. Um, and our youngest granddaughter is only one. She's Kate, because we have cats and we have cats. Ba, ba, is cool. You learn. Those of you who've had children know what I'm talking about. You learn right away to understand, not right away, but eventually um, <laughs> to understand what they're saying. So Gordon says, why not? This is manipulating the information. This is a good place to start. Now, I'm going to ramp it up a notch. I'm going to use his syllables just once, because I really like his syllables for 6 eight. And if you don't like them, you don't ever have to use them after today. <laughs> what I, there are three main building blocks. Here's the first. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. My do. turn. Do, die, do, die, do, die, do, die. Do, die, do, die, do, die, do, die. My turn. Do, de, do, de, do, de, do, de. Do, de, do, de, do, de, do. So those are the three building blocks. The dotted quarter, macro beat, the uh, three eighth notes being together, and the last one I didn't write up there, but it's a galloping or skipping rhythm. If we all weren't so tired, I'd have you galloping and skipping. Do, 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 galloping, galloping, or whatever. Yeah, but the galloping and skipping is a do, 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 do. Teaching rhythmic feeling, right? Now I have some women in their 70s in my belt choir. I'm not going to have them skipping around the sanctuary. Yes, but there are other ways. Yes. It's okay. So are you with me? Yes. And what I would do, because we're about how many of you know the Advent hymn, people? Look, peace, the time is near of the coming of the year. Those are the three basic building blocks. And yes, in more complicated music, there are lots of other rhythms. But by knowing those three rhythms, you can play this piece without too much trouble. So will you look, please, at people look these? We're going to start at measure 14 because that's where the verse comes in. Good idea. Let's see if this works better. So, um, this throws us a little bit of a curveball because it starts with 3 8. We're at measure 14. Are you with me? Yes. Put the bells down. We're not going to do that for a while. Um, please put the bells down. So. Yeah. so we're still manipulating the information. If we've never done 6-8 and I want you to be successful, you're probably not ready for this yet. You might be fine, but I'm trying to prove a point. Are you with me? 14, the verse starts here. It's a 3-8. Three 3-8's eight. Three half of 6-8, right? Gordon says fine. Everything's duple and triple, so it's just... One group of triple instead of two groups of triple, right? So look at 14, please. Do da dee do dee do dee do. We look at 14 and say those syllables. Here we go. Do da dee do dee do dee do. Did that make some sense? And let's see, to speed up the learning curve here, not, it may not speed up the learning curve. <laughs> to use our time more efficiently, can you use those syllables for um, what you see here? We won't turn the page now, because the rest of the verses, same rhythms. Beginning at 14, ready, and sway. Do, da, dee, do, dee, do, dee, do, do, dee, do, dee, do, da, dee, do. Do da dee do dee do dee 
Good. That was actually pretty musical, and you're having no trouble understanding that, right? If you have a group that hasn't done 6-8 before, you might have to do some more work. Um, I make unison exercises all the time. You know how we use unison exercises? We sort of try on the arpeggios. I make up with these building blocks. I would keep those three building blocks until it was a part of them. I would never do this in one rehearsal. If I knew we were going to start this piece at the beginning of November, I would start mid-September with just some things. You, you learn this after a while, that if you do anything too long, just your brain shuts down, that's the reason. <coughs> so if, I, if we just stepped and did this for one piece, fine, that's our break for tonight. Let's go back to this piece. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, you don't want to do all this in one class the way I need to. Here's another way to manipulate that information. Will you take your mallet? Middle school kids are ruthless. If you talk too long, they start clicking their mallets and or other things. Like Joy, Mr. Joy, my loves are up in the fluorescent light. <laughs> oh, really? How did they get there? Well, I just kind of tossed them there. But I read between the lines. I know why they're up there. So this is what I want you to do. I still want you to sway. I still want you to say the rhythms. Will you click your mallets together? And then I say, you're going to click your mallets, and then four of them start already. When it's time, I'd like you to click your mallets together. We're starting at 14. We're not turning the page. Sway, sway, 14, begin. Thank you. Good. Now, um, my new class in Rochester was manipulating the information, so don't pressure my brain. Um, one way to do it, because nobody plays every note, right? This group played measure 14 and 15, 16 and 17, 18 and 19, whatever. They have to follow along, we hope. They're tracking the rhythm, and they don't come in until it's their turn. All right? Any questions? So here's the big step forward. Will you mallet your notes, just your notes? I would not want you to play like this in church, but if you can still keep that swaying <coughs> quality in your playing, it would be helpful as we're learning. Do you understand what I'm asking? You're looking at your notes. But only on our business. Thank you, yes. Yeah. If you don't have notes, you don't play, but that's harder because you have to know when to come in and when not to. 14, do da -de playing now, do da play. My directions are lousy. Stop. Will you play your notes on the bell? So oh. I hear <laughs> 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 that. Oops. Random mallets. What? Random mallets. With the mallets. <laughs> Random mallets. <laughs> Random suspended mallets, right? <laughs> Here we go. Your notes, malleting your notes. I learned this a long time ago. If you don't know this technique, you should. This tightens up the ensemble more than anything else I know. As a director, you can hear immediately when people aren't with the rest of the group. Maybe you already know this, but thank you, God, because I didn't, and I had to learn the hard way, and or somebody told me this in a class. 14. Do da -de your notes, please. Do da -de do 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 starts going, I just, I can teach you what I want to teach you from that snippet. So if that's good, if it's appropriate, then you change the technique. Light marks, this goes to, I don't like all those repeated notes for marks. I wouldn't do that. But you might do thumb dance up here, and you might continue with the balance here. Are you with me? Now, 
Let's start bringing in. Here's developing the rhythmic feeling. We've been working that all along. You cannot deny. Well, you can. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Uh, what's the right word? You shouldn't not. I want you to think about the melodic rhythm and longer notes and shorter notes. You know how we talked about. Because with 6-8, you can do that really well with dab, 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 glide, dab, glide, dab, glide. And that is a huge difference because you're practicing the rhythmic feeling of the melody. You're not doing what so many mediocre choirs do. Because right after that long note where they stop, because the rhythmic feeling isn't there in their body, you're going to hear all kinds of places where people want to come in. Let's try, please, 14 to 23, bring to the best of your ability. Ability. Think of the words dab and glide. One, two, three, here we go. Dab, glide. any rhythm you want. But unless the rhythmic feeling is there, um, there's going to be a piece missing, I can promise you that. And I don't mind resharing that quote from the same book. We spend too much time trying to derive meaning from the notation. Instead, we should be bringing some meaning to the notation. It's not even in the same chapter as with it. Oh, maybe it is. I don't know. But by practicing the rhythmic feeling, I've been around long enough to know what the issues are going to be. Did I give you some things to think about? Yes. Don't open any more pieces, but I need to, so here's the next piece. We're going to do some Gordon-esque stuff. Um, so here's the beat. Step, 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 step. Just echo what I say. Ba, 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 ba. 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 Here's a chord, D, F sharp, A, C sharp. We pick up one of those bells. Now, lower bass, I wouldn't do this, but from D4 up. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. And your, main, your brain might already be saying, da, 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 fly. Da, 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 fly. You're experiencing the rhythmic feeling of this rhythm. I don't want to open the music and have you sight read it. Some of you wouldn't do very well. What I want to do is practice the rhythmic feeling so that you'll be more successful, so you're bringing something to the notation. Here's the rhythm again. Dab, 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 glide. Dab, 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 glide. When you think you have it, join me. Dab, 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 glide. glide. So that you get plenty of practice with either hand. I also want to know that you can do that with both hands. Are you with me? Next rhythm to chant. Here's the beat. Step, 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 step. This looks a little trickier. Many books define syncopation as um, accent and notes in between the beats. New chord, E G B D. And I want you to play that. One, two, three, and go. Good. You're an easy class. Mm, um, 
many church choirs and uh, kids. I always talk about kids because that's where I spent most of my life. For the same, it's, it's often harder. It's really, I love my church choir with all my heart, but boy, some of them just don't have the rhythmic feeling there that they need for these pieces. You with me? Um, okay. Would you open up uh, an expression of joy? You may or may not see some of these rhythms in this example. Uh, if we needed to. Depends on your learning curve. If we needed to, I would do what we just did. Can you mallet the rhythm of your step? And this is especially useful when you have different rhythmic layers. Remember in the Tammy Waldrop example? If you didn't sight read so well, I want to hear the rhythmic layers. I want to hear, can you do it accurately by yourselves? Can you fit it with another rhythm that's going on? That's terribly important in handbell ringing, even for the ADD people who have trouble focusing. Can you do your job while something else is going on? So there are a lot of things, but rather, it just depends on you as my group where I feel like you need the help. Will you mallet your notes now, please? And A3 is a pluck lift. You don't have to do it now, but that's a pluck lift on beat four. Beginning, your nose. One, two, three, and four, and three, and four. One, and two, and three, and four. sight reading, so I'm not being impatient. If you had a way to do that, it would take some practice, but you would know exactly when to put that down and pick up the other one. So you get the idea of what we're doing. Here's what I want to tell you, since a lot of you are directors, look at measure five. Da, 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 da. Based on what we just talked about, tell me about the rhythmic feeling of the bass and the stems down. Rhythmic feeling. Syncopation. All right, syncopation. What if I didn't know what syncopation was? You're not wrong, but I'm leading you. It's uneven. What's uneven? You're right, but what is? The macro beat is of different lengths, yes? And yes, there are people who will argue with me, and I will argue right back. Yes, it could be syncopation. But for me, what it is is the rhythmic feeling is different because the macro beats are of different lengths. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. And I love this example because in the very next measure, it's straight one, two, three, four. How would you conduct that? This is a trap. I have my preconceived notion. How would you conduct five and six? It's OK to be wrong. You can either conduct five and three or two and four on the other. Yeah, there's no right or wrong answer here, and there are people who don't get it. You know who Bill Payne is? He's one of the icons of the handbell world. One of the best performances I ever heard of Dorian Vance was done by his group, the Bucknell Ringers, when he was still there. He's been retired now, I think it's his second year. So the piece is in 8-8 eight, eight and alternates 4-4. Four, four. There's always somebody whose light bulb goes on and says, but there's just the same amount of eighth notes in 8-8 eight eight as there are is in 4-4. Four four. And yes, but then I get to get on my soapbox and say that the rhythmic feeling is different. So when I conduct that, and then when I get to the four, it's a straight four. 
Bill Payne conducted that entire piece in four. And the performance was stunning. And so it wasn't, his, his ringers were so good, or he taught it that way or whatever. But some of us remember back in the 60s, the black and white Japanese sci-fi movies that were dubbed over in English. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That's what this reminds me of. Bum, 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 bum. So I guess I guess that's an old joke because um, a lot of you have no idea what he's talking about. It's like you would see this on the television screen. Oh, what are you talking about? Oh, really? Yes, I think so. Don't you? Joke me crazy. All right, here we go. So without any other explanation. And I ask this every class. We have a half hour until the next class. Can I go over a few minutes? And if you really, for some reason, need to leave right at 3.45, I will not be offended. You're not in school, so I don't have to worry that you're out roaming somewhere. Uh, here we go. Will you, uh, will you try to mallet your notes once? I think you'll be more successful. Up, 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 uh, malleting and... Well, not, let's try it again. I wasn't quite right. It's nice, but it's not what John wrote. One, two, beginning, end. No, stop. Wait a minute. D E G A. I'm pretty sure I heard something else, but maybe not. My ears might be tired. One, two, let's try again. Four. Four. Mark lips and but not now. Two, three, four. if that's what you want to call it, fine. I'm okay with that. If I had written that, I might have said 8-8, eight, eight, but that's, it doesn't matter. The feeling, the rhythmic feeling, is that of syncopation. Let's ring. We're going to ring the first 12 measures, and then we'll move on to the last example. One, two, here we go. And tap, 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 fly. And tap, 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 fly. I did this at school. The A5 ringer was always behind. Dap, 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 lie, dap, dap, dap. That's a little tricky there, that after the tie was always late. And it was often because at, at church, it was Lynn. Lynn did da, 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 da. And then she didn't know when to come in. Dap, 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 lie, dap, dap, dap. That really helps. If you can do that, even at a slower tempo, is that developing rhythmic feeling? It absolutely is. Did I give you some things to think about in this example? Okay, don't open any music. Here's the last example. And I can show this in five minutes, maybe seven. Will you, this comes from Schleuter, the band director. The kids are sitting in their chairs, they're tapping on their knees. Will you use the pad in front of you? So here's the macro beat. By now you know this term, yes? I love this for mixed meter passages. This is fine motor skills, not the gross motor that would be involved here. So now I'm going to subdivide that macro beat into groups of two. Watch what I do. You remain constant. He calls this tack, clap, tack, clap, tack, clap, tack, clap. Got it? All right, now keep going. When I say switch, you're going to switch to the micro beats. When I say switch, you go back to the macro. Developing rhythm feeling, go. 
switch. 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 Bravo. So here's the next thing. From Michelle, I've looked at her all day and said, I know her, I know her. When she lived in Mississippi, she invited me to come and conduct the Young Winners Festival. And if I had looked at her name tag, I would have come immediately. But how? I've looking at her all day. I hope I didn't stare. So you're going to, from Miss Alleluia, blank, whatever, um, Kathy, from Kathy on down, you're going to do the macro. This is fabulous for tightening up the ensemble and the rhythmic feeling. And you're going to do the micros when it's time to come in. When, um, when I say switch, you're just going to go to the other. If you're doing the macro, you switch to micro. Got it? Mm -hmm. You're doing really well, especially at the end of the day, and especially listening to me all day. Macro beat. Ready? Go. And tap, 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 tap. Micro, ready, and now go. Switch. 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 Bravo. So that's perfect now, right? You get it? What I would do to manipulate the information is, okay, let's have this table macro, micro, macro, micro, smaller units, and eventually duets. Any school teachers in here? If you need assessment tools, here you go. All right, let's have Kathy and Michelle. You're going to do the macro, you're going to do the micro. You want to build some independent school skills, but you don't want to... Um, you don't want to do that until they're ready. You might even announce it next handheld class. That's what I'm going to do. Of course, I don't do this in church. Of course. All right. So this is what I want to do now. Here's the macro. And now, just so you know, this is a compound. This is how I teach mixed meter or asymmetric meter. Groups of twos and threes. One, two, three. One, two, three. Keep going, this group is going to do the macro. Here we go. Boom. Boom. This is what your hand should look like. Switch. Thank you. So I want to challenge you. Would you do two groups? I'm just going to write on the board. This is my brain. I'm just getting tired of this. Two groups of three. Then three groups of two. If you need to, this is what it looks like. One, two, three, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two For some of you, this is really easy. For some of you, this will be quite challenging. But it's the shift in how those rhythms feel. And if I'm teaching this, I would never start with the macro beats. It's so much better to work with those smaller things and then add the macro beats. How many of you know Fred Grayman's uh, Prelude, Changing Prelude on Divina Mysterium? Fabulous piece, one of my favorites. You know what the, the single biggest mistakes are? In all the meter changes, the bass ringers rush those macro beats because they don't have built in the feelings of twos and threes. All right, so we're starting with three groups of two. And three groups of wait. Two, two, two groups of three. Three, three groups, groups of two. two. One, two, three, here we go. Three groups of two. Keep that going. I'm going to chant something. I want you to listen when you can join me. Really in your body. <laughs> <laughs> and 
no words. What? So I got the hands, but the words aren't coming. <laughs> yeah, and here again, how many of you know the Advent hymn? Comfort, comfort ye my people. Um, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. If you don't know it, it's fine. That doesn't mean you can't play it during Advent, does it? <laughs> this is a big success story for me. I never did anything with uh, changing meters in my church. And I had to back up and teach every step along the way a little bit. And when they finally played this, they were so pleased with themselves. Um, comfort, comfort ye, my people. The melody comes in at 25. We're going to do one verse. Will you mouth it just once? Sorry, where are we starting? Uh, 25. This is the beginning of the verse. Before that, it's all prelude. It's like a little interlude or a ritornello or whatever. 25. What we've been working up to is something that uses 6, 8, 3, 4. Some year I'm going to get to this at the end of 8th grade. This is my goal. So when they come to see me at night, if they ring, they already know. But do you understand how important the rhythmic feeling is? and how it is a skill that can be developed. You don't want to try to derive too much meaning from the notation. You want to develop the rhythmic feeling, you want to bring some meaning to the notation, and that's what we've been working on. This is a summary of everything we've worked on. It's a little harder because it alternates pretty quickly to 6, 8, 3, 4. How many of you have never played anything in mixed meter like this? You all have. Wow. Here we go, 25, one and uh, two and uh, one, your notes only, 25, ba, 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 one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, stop. Again, my brain is saying that's plenty there. If you can understand that, you can understand the rest of it. Will you? Did you hear how some people rush the quarter notes? Yeah. A quarter note is equal to two eighth notes. So did you hear me count? One, two, one, two, one, two. Um, there are lots of ways that I would still rehearse this until everybody is on board with that. Let's just ring those measures. And you've been so wonderful for letting me go over a little bit. I just, it's just hard when I'm used to 75 minute classes. To do it in 60. That's an excuse. A good teacher can teach at any amount of time, right? Here we go. 25. Oh, I forgot. 25. <laughs> one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. Now and playing. One, two, three. Did you understand how important developing the rhythmic feeling is? Good. Now, the next session starts at...